Most fast API apps run fine until the database becomes the bottleneck. When it comes to performance, your database queries matter a lot more than you think. A single missing index or a forgotten join can turn a fast application into a slow one. So in this video, I'm gonna show you six essential database tips that'll make your Python backend faster, cleaner, and just more scalable immediately. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over 10 years of experience, and I've helped over 100,000 developers learn and grow within their craft. Oh, and by the way, Ivan is sponsoring this video. Ivan comes with a bunch of amazing services, one of them being a managed Postgres database, which we're gonna be using in this video. With that, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so the final application we are going to be building is a workout application. So you're going to be able to sign in to a workout and routine manager where you can have workouts and routines. Now I already have some data in here to show you the final project, but what we can see is we're going to have a couple workouts. We have push ups and sit ups. We can add more. So we can say pull ups and we can say chest to bar. And I'm going to say do 10 times. All right, and if you say add to workout, now it's a selection over here for a routine. So I already have a full body workout. If you click on that, it says full body. This is a full body workout for arms and stomach because we have push-ups and sit-ups inside. But here we can just say full upper body. Works out everything above waist. <laughs> and we can say we're gonna select all three. If you click it, it creates a new routine where it's gonna tell us all the workouts inside. So this is really cool stuff and we are going to optimize this application to make sure it has the highest performance possible. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump into our project's code. If we jump into our code, there's gonna be a code that doesn't yet work the way we want it to work. Like if we even go into our database core, we can see that there is no database yet. So we're gonna to need to optimize our application to use a database. And like I said earlier, we're going to be using Ivan because they have a great managed Postgres database for our need. Which brings us to tip number one, if you want to have a fast application, you need to have a performant database. So let's go ahead and jump over to Ivan.io. Now, this is your AI ready open source data platform. It comes with so many different services, but really what we're gonna be focused on is the Postgres managed service. Let's go ahead and log in. I already have an account, so it's gonna sign me in automatically, but make sure you create your free account. What we're gonna do here is just click PostgreSQL inside the services. We wanna use the free plan. You can select your region. I'm gonna say North America, New York City, and then I'm gonna say everything else is gonna be completely free, and then we can have our service name, which I'm gonna use whatever it sets as default. And we can say create service. Now inside here, we can say, yes, this is all good. We want a general connection. And then this is all the information for our Postgres database. Here we can say next, I'm gonna just skip anything else here until we can just say finish setup. Now setting up takes just like a couple minutes. It is so fast. And while it's setting up the database, I'm gonna go ahead and just connect it to our backend application. So this is where it's gonna show us our service URI. I'm just gonna copy this entire string. I'm gonna go back into our core.py and I'm just gonna paste this entire string right here in our SQL Alchemy database URL. Now, the only thing we need to do here is just add a QL right there. So it's gonna be Postgres QL and then it's gonna have all the information to our database. All right, so if we go ahead and check our Ivan environment, we can see that our database is up and running. So now that we have our Ivan database connected to our application, the second thing we wanna do is implement indexes to our database. And what indexes does is it increases the speed for lookups, filtering, and joins on your database. If we go ahead and we jump into our routines inside our entities, we can see that there is no indexes added to our entity table. Now we can come in here and just say, we wanna add a new table argument that is going to have two indexes. The first index is gonna be IX named, and IX is a very common naming convention for indexes. And we can say IX routines user ID of our user ID, and then index IX of our routines name of name. When you save this, because we've already ran SQL Alchemy on our Ivan database, this does not get implemented automatically. What you need to do is have some kind of data migration library integrated into your application. 
Now I already have Olympic set up on our application and inside our versions, we can see this first version where it says create the index if does not exist of our routines for the user ID and name. And you can do this by saying Olympic upgrade head. And what that's going to do is grab the newest version and it's going to add those indexes to our Ivan database. So now that our application now has indexing, that will increase the read performance for our application and our database. Now, the third thing we want to avoid is the N plus one problem. Now, the N plus one problem is when you search for a parent item on a database and then you query all of the children that you need for that specific parent. Now, I've seen a lot of applications do this automatically. And what we're going to be implementing here is something called joined load. So if we go ahead and we look at our routines inside our repository, we can see right here we have our get routines, which fetches all the routines from our database. We can get our routines from this DB query of our routine, and we're just going to filter on the user ID. And then for each routine that it returns, any variable call to the workouts, which will call another query to return all the workouts. Now, what we can do here is something called a joined load. So if we look at this now, we can see the get routines. We can say return DB query of our routine dot options where we're just going to join all of the loads of our routine workouts when we query and then filter by user ID. This allows us not to have to loop through all of the routines at runtime and instead when we call the query get all the additional items that we need when the query is ran. Now the next bonus for databases is to implement pagination and that allows us to only select and return a certain number of records from the database instead of fetching everything. So if there's a database that has like tens of thousands of records, well, pagination will allow us to only be able to search like 10 at a time. It helps with performance drastically. So if we go into our controller for our routines, we can see this git of git routines with our DB dependency and our user dependency. Here we can add skip and limit. Skip means how many records are we going to skip up front? And then the limit is how many we're going to return. So we can say return services, get routine, where we pass in the DB and user. And then we want to add the skip and we want to add the limit. If we now go into the service get routine here, we are going to do the same thing where we're going to add the skip and limit. And here in the repository, we're also going to pass in the skip and the limit. If we jump into our get routines repository, we're back where we just added the joined load. So just like you thought, we're going to pass in the skip and the limit. And now what we can do is right after the filter and before the all, we can go ahead and just say, hey, we want there to be the offset of our skip in the limit of our limit dot all. That will now properly implement pagination on our query call to limit how much data we return. Now, the next thing we want to implement is only returning the pieces of the record that we actually need. We don't need to return the entire entities. So for example, if we come over here and we look at our entity of routines, we might not need to return the primary key, the user ID, the name description, and all the workouts. We might be able to simplify that into maybe just like the ID name and description, and we can completely remove the user ID. Well, if we jump back inside our repository, and I'm going to make this a little bit easier to read. And what we can see here is that we have this dot options where we have this joined load where we're returning all the routines and routines dot workouts. But what we can do right before this joined load is say we want to implement something called load only. Now load only is a way for us to be able to simplify what we're going to be returning. So here we can just say like routine dot ID our routine dot name and our routine dot description. And then our load only is going to come from our SQL alchemy dot ORM right here. Now there's one more thing we want to do, and that is we want to add a load only inside our joined load for our routine workouts. This is because we don't want to return the entire entity of workouts. We only want to return certain pieces of workouts. So we can say joined load of a routine dot workouts, but then we want to say dot load only just like we did before where we can say workout id and our workout dot name 
And now we're gonna be simplifying what we're returning and only returning exactly what we need. Now, the last thing we are going to do is we can implement pooling inside our SQL Alchemy core.py. So right here, we create our engine. We can go ahead and say, hey, we want this to have a pool size of 10, a max overflow of 20, a pool timeout of 30, and a pool recycle of 1800. Now, pool size just means the number of connections you can have at one time. This means an extra 20 will happen if our pool size is full. We will wait 30 seconds for a connection before we throw an error, and we will recycle connections after 30 minutes. Now, if we go ahead and we run our application, and we sign in now as our user, everything's gonna work really, really well. We'll be able to add a new workout. So for this, I'm gonna say push-ups, add that workout. Then we wanna say pull-ups. Then we can say we wanna create a new routine of full upper body workout. Let's get swole. We can grab both items, add to routine, click it, we can see everything right here. So this is awesome stuff. We are using Ivan for our managed SQL database. We went over data migration to add indexes to our Ivan Postgres, and we went ahead and added different ways to increase database performance. This is awesome stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.